Alright, welcome back to Sonic Lost World, everyone. And... Yeah, just going right into this. Did... Okay, f first off, I do want to say that... This level is, like, very pretty. I do like the, um... The, uh, ice and all that. And... Why not? But the... The issue I, was ha I said I was having in the uh, last session is that this and another level C later on kind of just use the Windy Hill like scenery if you will especially noticeable with the background it's basically just Windy Hill with a um, like a palette change I guess I'm gonna turn it down a little bit it's kind of loud <laughs> uh, yeah it's a little bit disappointing in that sense. I kind of wish the areas would ha have more distinct, like, visual designs, I guess. But it's, it's fine, I guess. But yeah, I did also find out how to do the uh, parkour trick that I wanted to do last time. You basically... The reason why I was failing on, on doing that is because you can't hold... W when you're jumping back to the wall, you can't hold directly left or right on the stick, otherwise Sonic will kind of just lose all his momentum and won't gain enough speed to get back onto the wall. So, yeah, it's a pr fairly tricky thing to get right, but I did actually record like a little clip to that just showed me doing it correctly, so I'll probably just quickly show that off here. Because, um, yeah, when you do it right, it's so satisfying and you get crazy amounts of speed and it's one of those things where I've I've been mentioning in this game where you can do some cool tricks if you take the time to learn how the mechanics work, but the game doesn't really... Like, it's it, either the, the game doesn't teach you how, uh, how to do this stuff, or it just doesn't teach you it well. Because, again, there's the... Sometimes you'll go through an area and then the game will um, have like a hint marker chop on the screen which tells you look at the gamepad, there's going to be a thing there. Um, but who in their right mind is going to stop what they're doing? Look at the gamepad screen just to see like a random hen that might not even help much. It's like... I don't know what they were thinking with that stuff. Because uh, a lot of people have issues with this game just learning how it functions because it just doesn't teach the player very well. But yeah, she just... Yeah. I, it's a little bit awkward here, but like... You can like keep jumping back onto the same wall over and over and get like... Crazy speed. Like, like that. It's really cool. Okay, I just need to... I think this is a little bit like a maze. You need to like find the right area or something. I also really like the music here as well. Let's go like this way. Yeah. I will say this as well. The um. The uh, gimmick with the okay, I'm gonna use this. I've never actually, I never actually used the laser wasp. Her. Nice. Oh, you can just fall. That works. <laughs> Please. Ah. Uh. There we go. It's also worth noting that if you, if you're like skating, Sonic will do like a um, ballerina jump instead of just a, the uh, normal uh, ball jump, which is important to know because if you're if you're doing the spin jump where you're in like the ballerina pose, you can't home an attack, which is really important. <laughs> 
stuck with a voice chip that looks like it was built by a two-year-old. I think I liked it better when I was trying to destroy you. Yeah, well, feelings mutual, Eggface. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Before we start destroying each other, let's remember why we're working together. Okay, please remind me. Tails, we need Eggman to shut down his machine. And you don't trust me to do it. What? No! I trust you, Tails. It's just that... No, you don't. Yay, forced tr forced drama. Good. This story's just so all all over the place, dude. It's not as bad as forces in that regard, but like, th 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 this writing just doesn't work, dude. Like, you have new villains that are one-dimensional and barely leave much of an impression, and then you have. The characters working together, which is a cool idea, but then you just kind of force a drama like like that, where it just doesn't fit, just to try and add depth, which <laughs> like the, the, oh god, dude, I like the idea, like I like I like a lot of the ideas for this story, but like they needed someone, they needed a better writer. Okay, so if I remember correctly, this is... Yeah, this is an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, so... You're gonna be in this random snowball for this whole stage. In this... Another prime example of Lost World being... Um, very gimmick heavy. So we'll see how this goes. Like I said, I haven't played this game in a long time, so I don't know how this is going to go. I know a lot of people have issues with this stage, though. <laughs> and I'm gonna not getting a red ring here, so that's, that's something. Because, yeah, the, the problem with this is that if you don't get all the, all the balls... Balls. If you don't get all the balls in their holes, um, you won't get the red ring. But there's also a checkpoint right after that section, so it's very easy to just have that happen and you have to restart the whole stage just to get the red ring. So that's that's not exactly great. But then, I, I don't agree with like all the choices in this game. Like this game has some weird design choices sometimes. It's also worth knowing that like you don't actually get the rings you grab until you hit the checkpoint, so, um, if you, if you, so, if you end up dying, because even though you have, you have rings on you, that's why. But you're never gonna get close to me, blue boy. Alright, man. Yeah, this level, but yeah, this level can be tricky, uh, so you have to just kind of be careful of the, the obstacles, because a lot of these parts, a lot of these parts are, like, really narrow, and it's very easy to just kind of get knocked off to the side or something. I think... I am. Okay, this is... Okay, knock this, like, yeti out of the way. There we go. Okay. God, I, I don't know how these, like, controls work here. It's so weird. Okay. And this bit. Oh god. I don't know why Sonic has to go into a snowball here. Like, <laughs> just 
randomly decides to do this. It's like a lot, a lot of the level, like like the gimmick levels in this game just absolutely make no sense. <laughs> okay, that works. Interesting music. <laughs> God, I like how you also just get sent really slowly to the last planet, uh, planetoid. Oh, you're adorable. But this is also another boss that just kind of exists. You kind of just take out all of her, like, snowmen or whatever. Um, watch out for the bombs and that's kind of it. <laughs> At least this boss is a little bit more involved, but like that's not saying much. Eh. Damn it. Do you get it because she's a girl? Oh god. I'll, again, at least this theme is good. I'll, I, jeez. Oh, okay. All right. And snowball dance. <laughs> the hell. I will say this. Uh, you got you got to love how um, Eggman is like one of the only characters that's like um, written correctly <laughs> with um, like all these games. Cause uh, yeah, I don't really have I don't really have much much of an of an issue with uh, Eggman in this game. I think he works. Uh, I think he works really well, and <laughs> yeah. That, that is definitely a, a really powerful scene. I, I do like that. <laughs> like, actually seeing him go, like, like throw hands like that. But yeah. But yeah, you also got... You also got to love how... Silent Talk and Tales had to actually, like, react. Like... A another issue I have... With, like... The, um... Chem... Ken Pontak and uh, Graf uh, write style of writing is that they, for some reason, they feel the need to like have the characters react to like, um, oh like, oh Eggman said a crazy thing. Let's like, may like, like I don't know. They they kind of just force a reaction when it's really unnecessary. You you don't need to do that. Just let just let it let it speak for itself. I'm not explaining myself very well right now, but like the 
Sonic and Tails just randomly going like, whoa, Eggman actually said that, like, that added nothing to the scene. Okay. The uh, obligatory casino stage. And I think as you go up here, this goes to a a fairly difficult pinball, sta uh, pinball table. You need to go like, high up. To I think there's a red ring here. Yeah. So gotta love how in the original release, again, rings didn't get you uh, live, so... Getting... Th this place was basically worthless except for the red ring. Oh my god. This... Okay. Yeah, this is a... This can be a bit of a, bit of a mess here. Just gonna... Ugh! Okay, that's a red ring. You just you just fall down here. Okay, cool. Yeah, that can be a little bit tricky. Oh, good. I I will say this in regards to the red rings. Um, I one of the main complaints I hear a lot is that people think the the red rings in this game are like a really bad, like, difficulty spike, if you will, um, and I, while I agree to an extent, I feel like, I feel like that's always been the case, like, if you go through, um, more so colours, colours than gens, I, I don't really remember the red rings and gens being too difficult, but, um, in colours, if you try going for 100% in that game and getting all the red rings, it turns that game into a much more difficult experience. Because there's a lot of red rings in that game that are not easy to get. I, I just, I'm just gonna say that. Like, there's, I kind of glimp, like, uh, I kind of, uh, like, Move it or lose it, Snow <laughs> what you might call it. Um, there's a- in Aquarium Park, there's a puzzle with the Laser Wisp that's, like, really precise. Um, I kind of just glimpsed over it, but... Yeah, it's just stuff like- stuff like that that makes it- makes the Red Rings, like... Up the di basically just up the difficulty of the colours quite a bit. And while I- is the, I, it, it definitely is the same thing with this game as well, but I don't, I don't know if it'll be, I don't know if it's necessarily like to a much larger extent or anything. It's just, I, I think it's mainly just a mix of like the the regular game itself being fairly challenging, um, and not explaining how the game works very well. So you just kind of have a mix of that, which may, I guess, makes people like see the red rings as more problematic than they really are, but yeah, that's, I don't know, that's just how I feel. I do remember liking this level though. I do like some good, good old 2D platforming. And like, I know that there's like, a lot of people that aren't the biggest fan. I, I kind of mentioned this during the Generations LP, but, um, Um, yeah, I know a lot of people have issues with like the 2D 2D sections in these games, like I mentioned in gen in generations. I my opinion has like kind of shifted like over the years quite quite drastically. Um, 
Like I, I went, I went from not really minding it to uh, ha starting to have an issue with it and like wanting more 3D. And I'm at, I'm basically at the point where like I don't, I don't really, I don't particularly mind whether or not like a section is 3D or 2D as long as it benefits the, as long as it benefits the level design, and um, it's like. In, like just generally engaging uh, I do I would agree that um, I would like I, I will say this I in general I <laughs> I do prefer having like mainly 3d sections for like a 3d sonic game but I I don't put I don't like hate the idea of 2d sections in these games um, now, do some games overuse it, like colors? Definitely, but I... Again, if it... If the uh, level design is, like, built around it and it's, like, designed well, I don't mind too much. But that's more or less how I um, feel about 2D sections in 3D Sonic. They're definitely some of the more challenging sections in this game, I'll, I will say that much, because I feel like um, with 2D it's a lot easier to um, have very uh, tight level design because you're set on a like a direct path as opposed to in f when you're in 3D, um, your movement options are a lot more like, not all over the place, but the you can be a lot more you, you can go, you can move around obstacles a lot more freely in a 3D section, so it, it's like, compared to, compared to like 2D stuff like this, it's a lot easier to like skip out, like find ways to skip out on stuff that you otherwise f uh, find difficulty with, and also failing to get on these containers. Yeah, I, with, with uh, maybe the exception of The Last World, I do think that this game has a fairly good difficulty curve, because it starts off simple and then, like, you know, I, I feel like it gradually gets more difficulty without having too many, like, crazy difficulty spikes. Um, and a lot of the, usually when you have stuff like that in this game, it's it tends to be from, like, just weird gimmicks and lack of communication on the game's part. But in terms of, like, the actual difficulty balancing, um, I, I do think it's uh, fairly solid, and I think I can go up there. If I can get back on the loop. Alright. Yeah, again, I don't... I don't really understand these, uh, invincible invisible springs. I don't know why you can't just have the spring there to begin with. Whee! Now you wouldn't hurt a lady, would you? And levels are also starting to get gradually longer as, as well. Can't say the same for these bosses, though. Good boss. <sighs> Lost World is a very weird game. I have a lot of nice, I I have a lot of nice things to say about it, but I also have a um quite a lot of <laughs> not so positive stuff. It's um. Very strange game. <laughs> Destroy the Zeti in one quick stroke. 
and exterminate every living thing around them. Are you out of your mind? Of course, there'd be some collateral damage, but... Collateral damage? What kind of monster... Tails! I'm sorry. I suddenly felt very mean. Not the best idea to put the dimwit's head on a battle bot. In hindsight, I gotta agree with you, Doc. Thanks for the save. Um, can you get off me now? I can't figure you out. One second you're contemplating genocide, and the next you're saving one of your worst enemies. I'm a complicated guy. And you? What were you thinking, Tails? You could have gotten yourself killed. I was just trying to help. <sighs> there's... <laughs> there's, an there's an attempt. Oh boy. I guess we can try what another one of these frickin' things. Alright. Yeah, actually, using the stylus would be a good idea for this. I don't know why I, ca I can't just use, like, L and R for this or something. But it is what it is. I think you get the balloons up at the top, like you get like crazy amounts of uh, animals. If I can ever hit one of th oh, okay. It's super easy to get lose track of Sonic in this. I'll just say that much. <laughs> So I don't exactly know how many secret levels there are, because they kind of just unlock. Sonic is more formidable than I anticipated. Yes, he would make a powerful slave. Eggman taught us how to make robots. So we'll make the Hedgehog a robot. Excellent plan, Master. I'm sure you would have thought of it yourself. Oh yeah, okay. Just watching like old cutscene alone. Um but yeah, uh I like the music in the Silent Forest here because it's it kinda harkens back to like Rouge levels in SA2. So that's very like jazzy and all that. And Bandix from Mushroom Hill, I believe. Oh, okay. I'm gonna not do that. But yeah, I think I was meant go, trying to talk about this earlier before I got distracted by other things. Um, the way the levels are designed makes it very interesting for like different routes and all that because it doesn't really work how other games, other Sonic games do, where you have like your mid and bottom and like top routes and all that other stuff with these games. It, um, specifically the levels that are like, whatchamacallit, how, how do I say this without being dirty? Um, the, 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 this kind of design that is totally not like a dildo or something. <laughs> um, like, instead of having the mid bottom, middle, top routes, instead you have like, you just go around and just... You can just see a bunch of different pathways, and you kind of just pick the one you want to want to try. And it's definitely a different way to do things. I I will say this: I do definitely prefer how other Sonic games do it, where it's just like the normal types of level design and, you, and how you access the pathways and through like your exploration and whatnot. Um, but. I definitely don't mind it here. It's definitely different. 
Um, and I appreciate the attempt in ch uh, switch, like changing things up. Um, I it would it would definitely be interesting to see like this kind of control scheme in like more n like regular level design, like regular Sonic level design though. But you know, I don't mind it too much here. It's just it's just something you kind of need to uh, get used to and. Uh, you know, one of just—it's just one of those like Lost World quirks where you have to just get, kind of, get to grips with and just expect that like it's not really gonna function the same way as like other Sonic games for better or worse, depending on who you ask. Woo. Like, it just comes off as so forced when they're trying to be, like, uh, when, when they're trying to put, like, emotion and stuff in this, it's just, the writing, the acting, just, outside of Eggman, like, uh, Eggman's, like, uh, delivery was spot on there, well, Mike Pollock, rather, uh, was spot on there, but, like, I was too slow to save my buddy, it's just so forced and bad. I'll reiterate, I do I do really like this game, but the story is not one of those elements. Like, I I can take or leave Lost World story. Like again, the ideas are solid, but like the execution leaves so much to be desired, it's not even funny. And the the problem is that like the uh it these stories can't decide whether or not to be funny, jokey fun times, or be like super serious and like emotionally driven and have these character moments like it tries to just do so many different things and it doesn't really land very well with any of them and it just kind of comes off as half-hearted and poorly written if i'll be honest like it's definitely not the worst thing i've ever seen in my life but it's uh definitely one of the weaker sonic stories just for the fact that like it's so hard to take it seriously and it tries so hard to, like, make you want to do that. And you just kind of can't. Like, at least... And the thing is... Okay, just do this. Um, like, stuff like Shadow or whatever... Like, that... For sure, like, that game had its issues. Um, in terms of the... Uh, oh, what should I call it? The writing and all that, mainly because of the English translation. But like, even even still, like, at least with that game, it like it didn't feel the need to uh, talk down upon itself, if you will. Like, you know that a lot of the stuff is ridiculous, but like, it played it straight, and that's what I like about the uh, Sonic games of the 2000s era. Like, as much as as uh, crazy as they can be sometimes, for better or worse, like, at least they played them straight and they weren't afraid to just roll with it, like, I guess it needs to jump on that enemy to get up there, okay. Um, they, they played it straight and they weren't afraid to just take it seriously. And 
the thing with like the stories in these games is that like it feels like that it's impossible for the characters to do that anymore and it's just really annoying honestly it like it was it's fine enough in like gens and colors and all that because je colors good uh, colors is like the first game where they tried something new and like well again while I'm not the biggest fan of how they how they did it I don't fault uh, I don't fault, fault colors too much on that and the gens is like the anniversary game so like fair enough you want to poke fun at the series history and all that but Lost World and Forces, like, when they're actually trying to do a unique story and, like, actually uh, take it seriously, um, they still, well, well, they tried to take it seriously, but then they still also just have these, like, eh, hey, get it, pun entirely intended, like, let's, like, like, do, the, the, like, these forced jokes that just don't fit, and, like, these one-dimensional characters that have, like, no depth to them, and it's, like, it's, it, feel, it feels like the series, the series uh, with these games just are scared to try anything cool again in terms of like like just story wise I mean and it's uh we'll see how the, how things turn out with frontiers but it's definitely a side of this of this uh, meta era quote unquote that I'm just quite frankly getting sick of and it's like, these characters used to have so much, like, interest in... Like, th th there used to be so much depth and interest with these characters. And, like... They weren't afraid to... Kind of... Go... Crazy with, like, their, their ideas. And... Like, yeah, it's just... The 2010 era, 2010s of Sonic just, it, it feels like, it feels like the era where Sega were just kind of scared to, like, experiment. Well, not necessarily experiment, but it feels like the t time where, like, oh my god, uh, the time where, like, they never wanted to try, like, telling, like, interesting stories or, like, giving the characters depth anymore because like all the characters feel like they have that they, they basically feel like um uh shadows of their former selves like the sonic is basically just a self <laughs> he's basically just a self-centered jerk now there's no depth to him anymore um like tails is basically just a geek guy and just can't fend for himself even though that was like oh my god even though that was like one of the uh, core elements of his character in the adventure games and it's just and Kn Knuckles is basically nothing but an idiot now and just all this other stuff and it's like the okay okay uh, characters that I used to love back in the like the uh, 2000s era I just kind of not who they used to be like and you have like, and you have stuff like Shadow, which is basically just a rival to Sonic and nothing else. And it's just like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you, Sonic, because you suck. It's like, that's not the point of his character. And it's just so disheartening to see, like, characters like him just be completely <laughs> ruined. If I'll be honest, I'll give Boom a bit of a pass because it's just a separate continuity, and I think. For, I, I do think Boom is entertaining in what it sets out to do, but in terms of like the actual main, like canon for Sonic, like the modern series, like mainline games and all that, it with these games they kind of just don't understand what made these characters so likable to begin with, and it's just it's just so disheartening, dude. Again, say what you will about like 06 and whatnot. And while the, the writing is, like, the writing in that game is horrible, don't get me wrong. But at least, for the most part, the characters still act like themselves. Hey. Yeah, I don't really talk much about the level itself here, but I do like this level. It's very, very challenging, especially with the owl section at the end. 
Um, I didn't use the rhythm wisp at all, but like it does make things easier. But yeah, that th this is a that is an example of like the game al actually allowing you not uh, to like go through without using any wisps. So yeah, I do appreciate that at least.